evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for uh, Sunday, October the 9th. Per usual, we will be singing a few songs, observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for, for you that hopefully will be uh, edifying and enlightening. Uh, I will give you the uh, name and number of the songs we sing from the song book, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do not have that book and you want to sing along and you have a song book, or you can Google the song, I will also give you the name of the song. So first, it's number 31 in our book, and the title of that song is Be Still and Know. Be Still and Know, number 31. <clears throat> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. I am the Lord that strengthens thee. Uh, number 273, more precious than silver. 273, more precious than silver. Let's sing it through twice. 273, more precious than silver. <clears throat> Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. <clears throat> Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Before the Lord's Supper, number 315, when I survey the wondrous cross. 315, when I survey the wondrous cross. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died my richest gain, I count but loss, and bore contempt on all my pride. For it, Lord, that I should boast. My Lord, all the vain things that charm me most, 
I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love dedicate this part of the service to the Lord's Supper, which we are instructed to do uh, each Lord's Day. On the first day of the week, they gathered together and they broke bread. This is so important that we, uh, every Lord's Day and every day of our life, but especially at this remembrance time, that we remember what Jesus did for us in part of your divine plan, that he came to earth and form of a man, that he felt the pain and the feelings and the compassion uh, that all men feel, and that ultimately uh, he physically died, hung on that cruel cross of Calvary, feeling the pain and the wrath and the anguish. And uh, I just uh, uh, give pause to think of that wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. So we gather about the Lord's table and we uh, commemorate his death and we commemorate it by eating bread and drinking the fruit of the vine symbolizing his body and his blood let's pray for his body the bread our god and heavenly father we're so grateful that jesus was willing to come down from your right hand uh, and uh, come to earth in the form of a human and to ultimately be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Uh, we can't even imagine the agony of the body being nailed to the cross that he must have felt in those hours that he hung there. As we take of this bread, help us to remember uh, the body of our Lord. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We know that blood is what keeps us alive. Jesus was willing to shed his blood, and it was innocent blood. Uh, he did nothing wrong that uh, uh, would cause, or that uh, made him worthwhile of this horrible, uh, agonizing death. But he did so willingly. He shed his innocent blood, and we know that blood is uh, what washes away our sins so grace might come over us. Let's play, pray for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we know the importance of blood in our, in our bodies. And uh, we know that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood, that we might live, that our sins might be washed away, and that your grace may come upon us. As we partake, help us to remember the agony of the cross and the blood that was shed. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As we have completed the Lord's Supper, also on the first day of the week, we are instructed to lay by in store and give back to the Lord that which we have prospered. Um, we are supposed to purpose in our heart as we give. We're to give generously. We're to give with the knowledge that we're giving back what is ours. Help us to understand that we came into this world with nothing. We will leave this world with nothing. But we can leave our mark on the world by helping the church to do its mission, to bring others to the Lord and help those in need. And we just pray that these monies would be used for that purpose. Let's pray for the giving. 
Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that uh, we have the opportunity to give. And we're, we're so grateful that we give with purpose, that we uh, give knowing that uh, the monies will be used for your good and your kingdom here on earth. Bless us in our giving. Help us to make it planned giving. Help us to make it a giving in which we understand that we're giving back to you what is yours. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the final song before the lesson is number 770, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Words of the song by American poet John Greenleaf Whittier. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Recall the sin our rightful mind in purer lives thy service find in deeper reverence praise in simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea the gracious calling of the Lord let us like them without a word rise up and follow me O Sabbath rest my Galilee O calm of hills above where Jesus now to share with me the silence of eternity interpreted my love drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace oh I was uplifted by the singing I hope you were also, and uh, it's time for uh, a lesson. Uh, I hope that uh, this lesson will uh, lift us up a little bit as we explore some things that probably we know already, but uh, we will reinforce this in uh, our thinking and hopefully the teaching, and uh, it will be beneficial to each one of us. I will use as the text of my lesson a, a favorite psalm of mine. It is Psalm number 46. Psalm 46. And if we look at the first two verses of Psalm 46, they read this way. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. All right, and I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back to that verse. Uh, are we obsessed with things in our life? Uh, it is almost impossible to view anything on TV, a sports contest, whatever it might be, without seeing uh, our uh, smartphones. And I think almost all of us now have smartphones. 
uh, and uh, clicking them uh, in one way or another. They become our, uh, our uh, cameras, uh, but moreover, they become our, our connection, I guess, to other people. I'm throwing a number out here. Uh, the number that I have heard, now, you know, you can take me to task on this, but, uh, it is a number that, uh, I, uh, I, I've heard. And it says this, the top 10% of users, all right, click, tap, or swipe on their phone 5,427 times a day. That's the top 10% on users. So uh, maybe uh, uh, we don't do it that much. I, I certainly, I certainly hope so. This means that some of us may touch our phones if we started early enough a million or so times in our lifetime. Majority of the time, people are going to social media. There are several different social media platforms that are used. Probably the oldest, uh, I remember it was MySpace, and then uh, Facebook came along, and then Twitter and TikTok and uh, Instagram. I I've lost track. I've lost track because I don't use any of them. I guess I'm the albatross of our church. Uh, I, I don't just uh, get into that. People spend hours of their life being social, but indeed not really being social, being social vicariously through a device, using that device to text or uh, whatever one might do. The cell phone has ceased becoming a phone. I think it's a phone <laughs> for emergencies because it's probably used for several hundred things that uh, people use them for. People tap, swipe, or click the phone to find answers immediately uh, to questions. Uh, and in reality, uh, when people use the social media, they're trying to get, I think, uh, closer to people. But unfortunately, in the scheme of what life ought to be about, I think very often it leaves folks emptier than they were. As Christians, we have a social media without our phones. Our social media is our relationship with one another. And uh, that relationship that we have is because of Christ. But there's even more. It gets better. We have a relationship with God, the creator of the world. And so, I would like to take a few moments this evening to delve into that relationship that we have with God. Who is God to me? With that, let's go back to the 46th chapter of Psalms and start at the very, very beginning because our God in the 46th chapter, as we look at Psalm 46, uh, I look at Psalm 46 as, as a psalm of encouragement. And I think it answers a question. And that question is, who is God to me? And so that's the title of the lesson this evening. Who is God to me? Well, as we look at verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. He's a refuge. Refuge. It's not a common word that we use. A refuge is a place of 
comfort. A refuge is a place that we can go in times of need. So he's my refuge. And then in that refuge, it says, he's my strength. And so I'm not just going into a place to cower. I'm going to a place where I can find strength because that's what God is. He's our refuge and our strength. He's, he gives me more strength than I could ever possibly have on my own. Uh, have you ever seen, um, I guess, I get, I don't even know if it's on one of the ESPN ch channels, The World's Strongest Man. The show has been running for oh, 20, 25 years. You see some huge men on these shows doing spectacular uh, feats of strength, pulling trucks and uh, throwing huge tires, uh, whatever uh, the case may be. And uh, this one man, Julius Bjorgen, uh, recently broke the world record in deadlift by pulling 1,000 and four pounds. You want to put that in perspective? That's a half a ton. He pulled a half a ton. Lifting a half a ton off the ground to his waist, to me, is literally mind-boggling. None of us uh, in within earshot can can come close to that feat. But you know what? That's just physical strength, right? It's just physical strength. None of us, none of us will ever have enough strength on our own. Because I'm not talking about physical strength. I'm talking about God is my refuge and my strength. We may be physically strong. We may be, we may work out. We may be aerobically fit. But spiritually, God is the only one that can help us walk the Christian walk. You know, the Bible tells us that exercise, not to not do exercise, but it's just for the body. We need to exercise ourselves Spiritually, the Hebrew re word for refuge conveys the idea of a protective shelter. God gives us a place of safety, a place of shelter that no one can break into. You know, a thief can break into our home and steal our possessions. A fire can destroy things that we have, but no one and I repeat, no one can ever take away our relationship with God. If that's broken, that's on us. If my relationship with God is severed, that's because I severed the relationships, the relationship. And even more, he gives us the, the refuge, the place of shelter and the strength so that we can walk our Christian walk each and every day because it takes strength. It takes spiritual strength to walk that walk. The strongest man on the planet is weak compared to God. The most impenetrable places on earth pale in comparison to God. Who is God to me? God is my strength and he is my refuge. Now, if we notice, uh, also in that first verse, he says a very present help in trouble. So he's my strength and he's my help. You know, <laughs> trouble is something all of us face in life. We, we run into obstacles. We run into opposition, um, probably many times a day. 
Uh, have you ever heard a business a businessman say this? Good help is hard to find. <laughs> I've heard that term uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's a struggle sometimes. Restaurant owners, uh, business owners of every ilk. We, we hear that all the time. And what that actually says is in our life, who can we count on? You know, for, for an employer, it's a person who will show up for work. It will be a person who does his job, a person who is responsible. But the psalm indicates that we need help. And God is our refu refuge and our help. He is that help. And you know what? God wants to help us. It's why he gave us the avenue of prayer. He gave us the avenue of prayer so that we can communicate with him and let him know our needs. You know, uh, the, in, in the book of Philippians chapter 4, it says that you're, you're supposed to express in prayers and thanksgiving and make your wishes known unto God. Because God is there and he wants to help. God wants to help his children, just as those of us who were parents wanted to help our children in every way. And finally, third on this list is he is our courage. It says, therefore, we will not fear. So he's our refuge. He's our place of comfort. He's our strength, my help to keep us uh, uh, walking the Christian walk. And finally, um, he is our courage. We will not fear because we have the courage of God. He's my courage because he helps me to not fear what happens to me. Do you know what a phobia is? Do you have any? How many of you are afraid of heights? How many of you are afraid of being cramped in in small places? How many of you are afraid of certain insects? How many of you are afraid of darkness? Is there anybody out there afraid of, of uh, thunder? Um, uh, are you, you afraid of flying? Uh, are you afraid of, of, of riding on an elevator? Now, there, there are all of these fears. Some people won't get in water because they have a fear of drowning. Some people, agoraphobia, won't leave their home because they have that innate fear. And so the, uh, uh, this is according to the University of Pennsylvania study. There are, are hundreds and hundreds of phobia, phobias. The world is full of fears. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't like real high places. Oh, I, I guess that's, that's one of mine. Fear of things is an ever present problem um for, for whatever reason it may be something that happened to us in our childhood but you know what our relationship with god gives us a choice it gives us the choice to have courage instead of fear Hope instead of dread. Joy instead of worry. Peace instead of anxiety. And so, though the earth offers us all these things that perhaps we may be afraid of, and though our 
world may fall apart around us, we can have courage instead of fear. And, and how does that help us? You know, in our lives, it takes courage to do certain things. It takes courage to talk with someone about the hope that lies within you. And it takes courage to let them know why you're walking your Christian walk. It, it takes courage. It isn't always easy. It takes courage to confront someone who has gone astray and let them know that you're concerned about them. And you let them, let them know that that concern borders about an anxiety that you might have, that, that they might not be walking their Christian walk. And so with that, Christian living takes courage. And God offers us, he says, therefore, we will not fear. And it goes on to say, he says, though the earth should change and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, we will not fear. So, as we finish up this evening, who is God to me? Well, he's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my help. And he's my courage. You know, I guess instead of spending the, the time that we spend on our cellular devices each day, let's spend more time in our relationship with the Lord, praying to our Lord, communicating with our Lord. If our relationship with God was turned into a survey, how many times would we contact our God? God wants a relationship with us. He is our creator. Let's make sure that we spend time with our God. And so I pose the question to you this evening. It's an open-ended question. Is God your strength and your refuge? Do you view him as your help? Do you view him as the source of courage? Building and strengthening relationships with our fellow Christians, but especially our relationship with God, is probably the most important thing that we do in our lives. Let's never grow weary of building that relationship. We can only build a relationship with God if we are one of God's children. When we become a child of God, God listens to us. He's on our wavelength. Just as surely as we click, push, and, and swipe, he is on our wavelength. And he has instructed us in his word how to become one of his children. We do this after we hear the word of God and we believe it. And we have that faith that there is a God and he sent Jesus to us to confess that Jesus is the son of God. And to be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you're in my listening voice this evening and that is something you know you need to do, please Feel free to contact any one of us. We're ready to help you. Let's uh, end this service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we're able to spend with you. We pray that you, you accepted our songs as songs of praise. We pray that as uh, we commune together in the Lord's Supper, that uh, you realize how much we love you and how much that Jesus and the sacrifice that meant to us. And finally, I just pray that as we think in terms of what this lesson was about, that we come to understand who God is to me, that he is our refuge and our strength, our help and our courage. Be with us and help us as we put our heads on the pillows this evening 
to have God in our mind and on our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh, worship the King.